Welcome to The Determined Mom Show, the only marketing podcast dedicated to guiding mom CEOs into tranquility, wealth, and multiplying those precious moments. Welcome to this episode of The Determined Mom Show. I have Amelia Stamen here, and she is a E- an email marketing strategist and copywriter with Virtual Amelia. Welcome. How are you? Hi, Amanda. So great to be here. I'm so excited to be on here with you. I am doing well. How are you today? I am doing good. And I'm very excited that you're here because we're going to be talking about the six emails that you have to have in your welcome sequence. So this is extremely important. And especially for new business owners, this is one of those things that's like, the missing link in the puzzle. And like, there's just so much that is behind it that is unknown, especially if you're not familiar with the marketing world. I am excited to talk about that today, but first I would like you to tell us about you and how you got started in your business. Okay. Yeah. So I got started really, I, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of a newer kind of copywriter. I'll, I'll say that out loud. I I'll own it. You know, <laughs> um, I started my business in 2019, kind of offering a variety of services. And then early 2020, I made, and, and copywriting was included in there. So, I, and then early 2020, I made the decision to go fully on copywriting mm-hmm. and I made that decision. Just, I was just, you know, I, I've always been a lover of writing and reading um, and you being able to kind of use that skill in a way that has like a formula about it is like, that's perfect. That's exactly it. That was, I, I figured out that's exactly what I want to do. And um, being able to help entrepreneurs and coaches then help other people to sell their services is really, that's how I want to help the world. So. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love, there's a couple things in there that I want to point out. And one is that she started by offering many different services. And this is how we all start out. I started out as a virtual assistant too, and I was just basically doing whatever anybody wanted me to do. And I think it's really important to know that if you're listening to this and you're in those beginning stages, it's okay to try a bunch of different things and experiment and find the thing that you love, like Amelia did. Like you have to go through that stage. You have to go and experiment and try all of those things. And I think that's a really important thing that you've done. Awesome. Yeah, I totally agree. And just getting, getting your hands dirty and figuring it out and then, you know, really kind of narrowing it down. Don't, don't try to pigeon your hole, your pigeonhole yourself right Mm -hmm. from the beginning, if that doesn't feel comfortable to you. Yeah, exactly. And just go with what makes you feel good. I feel like that's the biggest thing. Like what is the thing that you could spend hours at your desk doing and love? I think that's another point. And you kind of brought that out as well in that point it, or in your statement where you said, you know, this is just the thing that I love doing, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think that's a good, a good thing to point out anyway. So let's go ahead and talk about it. What are these emails? Like what are these types of emails that we need to have a converting welcome sequence? Yeah. So I, um, the converting welcome email sequence is such an important part of, like you said, when you start your business to really get those new subscribers very warmed up to you, create that no like and trust factor and really help them understand who you are and if you are the person that they want to work with. And so those six emails, I have a cute little acronym to help remember them by, and it's fab flow. So you want to create a fabulous flow, right? Fab flow, F A B F L O. Do you want me to get right into all of them? Yeah. I love that by the way. (laughs) First of all, I love the acronym. So I can't wait to hear what they stand for. Okay. Awesome. So the first F um, stands for freebie and these are all kind of interchangeable. Obviously I, I made the acronym, so I'll, I'll kind of give other words for them. Lead magnet freebie. They're kind of inter they're interchangeable at this point. So that's the thing that's going to attract new subscribers to your list. That's something that you're giving of value. And that's what the first email is going to be. That's your delivery of whatever that item is, whether it's a checklist uh, for me, mine's a template or even just a services guide. There's, there's a lot of different kinds of freebies that you can create to, to create in that first email. The second email I like to put as the about email. So this one's about you and about how you can help them. You do want to kind of 
not like tell your whole entire story in an email, obviously keep it short, keep it so simple. So it shouldn't be <laughs> like three pages long while you're scrolling, right? <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to keep it kind of high level, how you got started, what you're doing now and why you're doing it. You know, those are three simple things to kind of include in there and, and the call to action for that email. Cause you, you, the point of the email sequence as well is to really invite people to interact with you. It's not just you talking to them, it's them also kind of interacting with you as well. And that, that will also later on help your open rates and deliver um, deliverability with your email marketing service provider and so many more things down the road. So the call to action for that second email can be your, your invite them to tell who they are and you, you know, tell them, Hey, who are you? I'd love to know who you are. I have this in my email sequence and I get, I'm getting even more and more replies, which is awesome, but it's so fun to get those emails in your inbox. It's like you're talking to a friend and that's exactly what email marketing is all about. The third thing is the B. So I put blog here again, interchangeable with any kind of information that you can deliver to them, whether it's a blog or a YouTube video or a podcast episode, or you're even just kind of writing um, stuff straight into the email. You want to kind of show them what you know. And that again, helps to establish that, that know, like, and trust that shows that you're an authority. It shows that you do know your stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. So whether you're giving them tips or you're actually teaching them something that is, that's what you want to include in that third email. The fourth email would be the fax email. So this is where you, if you have them, and I know when you're first starting your business, you don't have testimonials. So if you have testimonials, you definitely want to use them in here. And by facts, I mean kind of overcoming objections. Give them the facts. Give them why they want to work with you. You're giving them the facts by giving them a testimonial. This is not something that you made up. And please don't make up your testimonials. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're, you're giving them the facts of the, the great experiences that you have provided to other people. So include those testimonials. And if you don't, there's still a way to overcome objections by kind of creating it as like a question format. So what are some questions that people may have um, about your service or business that then you can answer in that email? And that's another way of overcoming objections as well. If you don't have the, you know, the testimonials to support that. Yeah. The fifth email would be, I, I again, I called this one literature. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted it to be a fab flow. So literature, um, again, could be another source of information. You're trying to give them even more tips, tricks, or um, facts that you can provide to them. And again, blog posts, and, and this can be your own content. Ideally, it is your own content. Or if you don't have it at the moment, you can always, you know, outsource if it's, you know, if, if I want to share one of Amanda's episodes from the Determined Mom podcast, then I can also include that in my, in my um, email sequence. And as I start to create more and more content, as I work on my business, you can always edit and change things down the road. So you're not stuck with this email sequence. Yeah. Um, and so really that, we should be changing it as our business evolves and as things change in our industry, right? I mean, yes, yes, okay. absolutely. I, I suggest revisiting it, try to revisit it at least a couple of times a year. Mm -hmm. um, I know myself, I have a hard time doing that. So even once a year is, is just at least the minimum. Okay. Um, but it depends, you know, on how fast you are also creating content. If you're creating a lot of content, you're going to have, you're going to see what people like to hear from you. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll, you'll kind of know what to then include in that email sequence. So you can always change things out uh, by knowing what they want to hear. And then finally, the last email of your welcome email sequence is your offer. So it doesn't need to be an actual like sales offer. This is not a sales sequence, but it can be, but you do want to keep it kind of to a lower ticket item. Uh, it doesn't need to be a $1,500 course. <laughs> you know, that's not what this email sequence is about. More than likely um, a discovery call to get them on the phone with you, if that's what you call it. You're, you know, there's tons of different names for discovery call, um, but to get them on the phone with you to discuss further, invite them to kind of get to know you. That's really what that last email is, is about. So I love that, that wraps up the whole sequence. Um, freebie, about, blog, and then facts, literature, and offer. Okay. Now I love that. And I do have a few questions that came up as we were talking. So 
about the last one, we should only put one offer in there, correct? Like it should focus entirely on one offer. Yes, yes. Okay. Great. Thank, great point. Thank you so much. When you are including your call to actions in your email, um, you do only want to have one call to action per email and ideally three places where that call to action is kind of listed, a button, a link. It's all the same one, but three times within the email is ideal. Obviously more is great, less is okay. But that, yeah, one call to action per email is, is perfect. You don't want to confuse people by, you know, sending them too much stuff mm -hmm. um, or having them try to click too many links. Or there's a saying I just looked at. It was, I had posted it previously. It was like a confused mind makes it, they don't know how to make a decision. Yeah. So, so they just close your email and never look at it again. Exactly. <laughs> so we don't want that. <laughs> no. Okay. That's awesome. So another question that I have is what is your, I'm going to ask this in two different parts. What is your favorite email provider for newbies? Okay. So for someone that doesn't have a list yet, they're just starting, they need to capture those leads. They need to set up their lead magnet and their welcome email sequence. What is your favorite email provider for them? And then also as people get a list and they're growing into the, you know, thousands of followers or um, subscribers, what would your, you know, is it, does it change or can you still use the same one? What do you suggest? Mm -hmm. Um, the, my favorite one for starting out and keeping costs to a minimum or none, um, is MailerLite. Mm -hmm. So MailerLite is actually the only one as of right now, um, that, that I found that allows you to actually create a multiple automated sequence. A lot of them allow you to send out one email automatically for free. And then when you try to add more emails to that sequence, then they're like, okay, you need a paid plan. So MailerLite is the only one I found right now that allows you to do that. So you can create the six email sequence and still be on their free plan. Mm -hmm. And then yes, you're right. The, your, your, as your needs change, your, your software is going to change too. So MailerLite, you can totally stick with it. Also MailerLite is the easiest one to use. I've worked with a lot of, obviously I've worked with quite a few different coaches and entrepreneurs and um, a lot of them have used MailChimp. They have a great marketing, I'll give them that, but their service and platform is not the easiest for, for people to understand or use. Um, so I do not recommend them, yeah. but MailerLite is, is what I do recommend. And then kind of next level up, I kind of actually have three tiers. So um, the next level up is I, I personally use Lodesk. It is a somewhat newer platform, but it is so pretty. And I know that's not the point of email marketing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's a very helpful point. But it, again, there's their, their software is so easy to use and um, the cost is minimum if, if they do have a a 50% off coupon that like floats around and very popular. So ask anyone, if you, if you're even going to the flow desk group, you can ask them there and someone will provide it for you um, for 50% off their service for life. And so, yeah. So if you go on there and you're like, Whoa, that's a lot, it's, it's, it can be taken down. Mm -hmm. So um, that one is really great, easy to use. They have, they're always adding new features again, because they are a newer platform. They, they can be a little bit limited. So that's why it's kind of my in-between one. Mm -hmm. um, and then as your list grows bigger, I would say over the thousand, you know, 1500 mark, I'd really like active campaign. That one has a lot of different kind of workflows, unsubscribe if you, very easily from a certain sequence, but still keep them on your list. You, they can opt into different sequences and it gets really intricate. And that's what you need when your business starts to grow and your list starts to get more and more intricate. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. I love all of those. I've used all of those in some capacity, whether it be for my clients or for myself, I did use MailChimp for years. And then I was like, Oh my God, I literally hate this. There's gotta be something else out there. And I think like episode nine or something like really one of the first episodes of my podcast, um, back in 2019 was literally about my journey from MailChimp to MailerLite. So, um, I love MailerLite. I currently use Aweber, but, and I kind of think, so Aweber came out with a free plan last year. And I kind of think that you can do more than one automation in there. Okay. I think that the, I would have to double check that, but I think that the limitation is just on the amount of subscribers. And I think that they give you this, the, the premium features, 
for mm-hmm. the free account. So okay, okay. I think cool. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm pretty sure. But yeah, I love Aweber, and I really just absolutely love it mainly because they have an RSS feed thing that you can just pop, you know, like just refresh your RSS feed and it puts your latest podcast episode in there and it's super easy. So that's like one of my favorite features, but, (laughs) but yeah, so this is extremely valuable information and where is the best place for people to find you online? And I'm sure that you have some sort of freebie or lead magnet or something (laughs) that can help us. Right. Of course, of course. Yeah. Thank you. So my freebie is actually a, it's actually this exact thing. It's a seven part welcome email sequence template in this. It's literally like, I don't know, an 18 page Google doc that I created. So it's very intricate. Um, and it goes through all of these emails, gives you the template kind of tells you where to fill it in. And I know fill in the blanks are not for everyone, but even if it's a great kind of springboard to start from, even if you don't like use the template, you'll get, it'll get your juices going and then you'll be able to create your, your own, which is exactly the point of a template. Right. So exactly. of course, feel free to download that. Um, my website and the link to download it is virtual Amelia and my name is spelled different. So it's virtual Amelia, A M I. LIA.com slash guide, G U I D E. So virtualamelia.com slash guide. And of course, I'm sure we'll put that in the show notes. Mm -hmm. Um, And then that is my website, virtualamelia.com. I am on both Facebook and Instagram. I am more active on Instagram. And that handle is virtual.amelia. Okay. And then my page is, I don't have a group or anything on Facebook, but I do have a Facebook page. And that of course is virtual media. So I I keep it consistent everywhere. (laughs) That's good. That's the way to do it, right? That's exactly what you're supposed to do. Awesome. Well, I truly appreciate you being here and sharing this amazing information with the audience, because I really think it's something that we haven't talked about before. And it's a really important part of getting started or even revamping what you already have going. So Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And I look forward to working with you in the future. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amanda. It was a pleasure to be here. Don't forget to join our Facebook group, Mastering Google My Business to increase your revenue. You can go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash learn GMB and you will be able to network with other business owners and learn all about the latest and greatest updates to Google My Business. See you there.